Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So this particular video is kind of a quick little review about the second half of the speed trap and collision point lab that we did on Tuesday. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I've actually already collected the data and I've graphed it. So this is more of a summary of what we did in the lab. If you actually want to kind of go through and do it yourself, the directions are on Canvas. Feel free to go to JS Track, look at the videos and go from there. Um, this is kind of just a brief review of what's going on. So going through the lab, hopefully you had a chance to collect some data. You'll notice that this video is a little bit different than the original videos in this lab. In the first part of the lab, we were looking at just one car and we were trying to determine how fast it was going, its velocity. All right. And remember, we did that by mapping out its motion on JS Track, graphing it, putting a line of best fit, and figuring out that the line of best fit is actually telling us some things about the motion of that car. And the slope of that line is the velocity. All right. Now, the second part of this lab is very similar to that, We have, except now we have, instead of having one car, we have two cars. So I've already collected the data, and currently, as you can see it right here on the screen, what I did is just kind of went through the lab directions, I set you know, the scale that I needed to, and I did the motion maps for each car. All right. Now, the red car and the blue car are moving towards each other, and as you can kind of see, I can kind of go backwards, and I start you know, letting it go. You'll see that it's clearly moving backwards, and then I can move it forward as well. Now, I've collected this data, and it's showing me something that's going on here. And just by kind of looking at it, I can clearly see that it looks like one of these cars is definitely moving faster than the other one, just by kind of looking about the spacing between the dots. All right. Now, I took this data, and I have it for the red car and the blue car, and I decided to put it into the graphing program. All right. Now, the directions to do this are online, but basically what you're going to do is you're just going to plug in the data. And every, once you plug in one car's worth of data and you do clear fit, put a line of best fit there, you're going to click change data set and it will let you put a new data set in there as well. Now, what I've done is I first have graphed the blue car. All right. And of course, this is very confusing because the blue car is represented by a, red, by a red line and the red car is represented by a blue line. So I apologize for that. But I've graphed the data for the two cars. Now, the reason that we do this and the reason that this is important is because we're going to find out that the most accurate way to ever make any prediction in life is to consistently collect data on it. Unfortunately, we do not have an infinite amount of time to collect data on these things. So instead, our next best alternative is to collect enough data that we can see a general trend so that we can make a prediction. All right? And that's what we've done here. Now, the first thing on your lab sheet, if we're looking at it, you'll notice it asks you to write down the left car equation and the right car equation. All right. Well, the left car equation is going to be for the red car. So I'm going to switch right here is the left car equation. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take, I'm going to take a little screenshot and I'm actually going to plug in the picture. All right. So right there, that's going to be the formula we're looking for. And that's going to be for the left car. So the red car, All right? Cool. Now, same thing. I'm going to go through as well. I'm going to go to back to the right car, which is the blue car, and we do the exact same thing. Now, just by looking at it, you can start to see that there's definitely a difference in the slopes between the two things. All right. And remember, that slope tells us how our velocity tells us how fast we're going and which way we are headed. So as we can clearly see, looking at this, this over here, if it'll let me. For the left car, it's moving faster than the other car, and it's moving in a positive direction. Whereas for the right car, it's moving with a slower velocity in a negative direction. All right. Now, what I've done is I have graphed the data, and I'm using it to make a prediction. And the next piece is it wants us to put a little screenshot in our lab of this actual graph. So you're either welcome to use the lab, the data that I've created. You're welcome to use your own data. It's really up to you. But I'm going to go through and just put this in the lab real quick so it's there. Perfect. Now, what I've got is I have an image that is going to let me answer some questions. I'm going to wrap text around it. This graph has a lot of power. All right? And the reason is because this graph actually tells us a lot more about the motion of an object than we might realize at first. All right? Because what we've done is we have actually given ourselves the power to tell the future. Because what we have done now by drawing two lines of best fit, we have extended what we think the data should do because what we're going to do is make some assumptions about the laws of physics and assume they're not just going to magically change some point later in time. And we've extended what's going to happen. All right. Now, looking at this picture, there's one very important piece 
that matters here. And that's going to be the point where the two thing, two lines intersect. All right. Now, from a previous homework, I asked a couple questions about what happened when I have on a position time graph when two position timelines interact with each other, specifically when they intersect. And what happens is they're now at the same place at the same time. Now, in that case, what that means is that these two things are going to collide at this particular point, according to what we've modeled. All right. Now, before we kind of make our prediction, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to watch a video on Canvas. There's one that says collision point video full. You're going to watch that video. All right. But first, let's make our prediction. So if you're looking at the graph, I want you to take about 30 seconds, if you don't mind. I want you to predict, according to the graph, where the two cars should collide and at about what time they should run into each other. All right. So hopefully if you had a chance to look at it, if you need more time, feel free to pause the video right now and look at it a little bit more. But if you're looking at your graph, it pretty much looks like the cars should collide at a position of about 1.4 meters and about a little more than four seconds, maybe like 4.1 seconds. All right. Well, the best way to figure that out is to see if the video says, if that's what happens in the video. So if you could, I want you to watch the video on Canvas. Remember, it's the collision point full video, I believe is what it's called. I want you to watch it. So pause this video, take a second to watch that, and see if your prediction was correct. So if you could, take a second, just pause this video, watch the other one to see if your prediction was right. All right. So hopefully you had a chance to look at it. You'll notice that your prediction hopefully was indeed correct. And what we should see is that if you predicted that it crashed at about 1.4 meters at a time of roughly about four seconds, that seemed to be pretty close to what actually happened. So what we're seeing out of this, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that we have the ability to use data to actually predict what should happen in the future. That's what physics actually is. It's taking data about how objects move, how they interact with each other, collecting enough of it that we can make a little prediction or a model of how it should keep acting later on. All right. Now, just to kind of finish up our lab, it asked the last two questions. What is the velocity of the red car, the velocity of the blue car? So we already talked about it before, but the red car velocity, that's the one that's going the left, from left to right. We said the velocity was 0.38 meters per second, and it is positive because the slope is positive. And for the blue car, same deal. We're looking at the slope of this line of a line of best fit. The velocity of this one is negative 0.14 meters per second. And again, all the slope tells us is basically how much position I've gone in a certain amount of time. And negative and positive just mean direction. All right. So with that being said, that kind of just summarizes a little bit about the collision point section of this lab. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to come to office hours. Otherwise, have a great rest of the day.